where we're at today, uh, we had some hardware issues last time in class, yes, uh, with hardware and related to Pro Tools. Uh, I was in here for Tuesday afternoon working with the lab assistants, hopefully to overcome those. So we're about to, we'll probably find out here within the first five minutes whether we've overcome those, in fact. Um, but I believe we've solved the issue. I've got the issue solved on my machine up here and on this machine here, so I know it's working up here. And if the lab assistants did their job in going through all the machines correctly, then we, we should be good to go. Um, just a word of caution in terms of uh, we've got a lot of, there's a lot of things in Pro Tools I want to show you today. So it's important that you're in Pro Tools following along, click for click, motion by motion. Uh, I am recording, so hopefully you can play this back later. Uh, let me ask a question. Those of you that have used the... Uh, recordings. Does it help when I do the little zoom features to be able to see things on the screen or is that not helpful? I'm seeing one head nod. Kind of? Okay. Without it, you can only leave room for wondering where the mouse is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can re I make the mouse bigger so it's a little more visible and then there's a little radar effect when I click on something. Um, it's just the, the zoom is the, probably the most time consuming part for me clicking where the zoom starts, where the zoom ends, and how much to zoom and where to position it. That's what take that's what takes longer for me to do in, in the editing process. So it's nice, but I think it's like it's not really necessary because you can see what's on the screen. So okay. Is, so yeah, sometimes though I reduce it down to like twenty five percent and at that point you can't tell what's on the screen basically. I mean I'm trying to find a balance between I guess file size because I don't want the files to be too huge and uh, editing time so that I can get them posted more quickly. So well, I'm, I'm talking about the, ed the time it takes for me to do the edits and get it posted online. I'm trying to do that all in one day, but um, I have some other things I have to tackle today, so I, I might err on the side of not putting the zooms in, but a bigger file, okay, uh, this time around, and I might then be able to go back and circle around and, and fix it, but just a word to, well, as I wanted to get your input on that, guys, as far as whether the, the zoom was helping or not, or whether it was just superfluous, you could still see on screen. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I've shied away from YouTube just because of uh, when I play examples in class, there's a royalty situation there. So, yeah. Uh, I don't have any examples today, though, so I should be able to post this on YouTube. I'll, I'll take that into consideration whether to do it on YouTube or just my own personal site. But anyway. Okay. We're la launching Pro Tools. So let's launch Pro Tools, everybody, on your machine. Uh, if you need to consult on Blackboard. These are the features I hope to get through today. Okay, so if everything goes well, we should be able to get through these features. Uh, just let me move over to my machine. So again, the Pro Tools icon, and you sh you might, when you launch Pro Tools, if you open up your old session, your session from yesterday, you might see a session screen like this. It's basically telling you that the hardware input output has changed since the last time you opened this session. This is not as um, in this lab, this is not as devastating as the, the warning screen makes it sound. I'll put it that way. Okay. If we were in a bigger studio with 96 inputs and an HD system and all sorts of things, this might be a more devastating error. But here in the lab, when you're just working on these simple machines with the little uh, fast track box and the inputs in here, uh, this is not as big a problem as the, the warning screen makes it sound. Okay. So I have. I always have students saying, oh, what do I do, Dr. Wallach, when this screen pops up, okay? Uh, best thing to do is hit no, okay? You don't need a detailed report of your input-output hardware settings changed, okay? And if you don't see that screen, great, okay? But this is a warning if it does pop up, okay? Um, I covered how to pl plug the microphone into Pro Tools. I want to just kind of uh, remind you of plugging into the back of the inbox making sure the inbox is on before you launch Pro Tools because that can affect things. So if you don't see that blue light on the front of your silver box, that's a problem, okay? Um, and if we want to record, we want to make sure that the, the microphone is plugged in, okay? Sometimes people, there's only, there's a limited number of USB ports on the back of the machine. Sometimes people have been unplugging the fast tracks to plug in hard drives and stuff like that. That's okay, but if you're trying to use Pro Tools, that's a problem. You need to make sure you've got everything plugged in, okay? All the stuff that goes with the computer, okay? So your task that we were able to get through without the fast track for some of you using the kind of, you, some of you were shouting at the computer screens last time, yes? Um, let's, if we could recap that, if you opened up your session from last time, 
Uh, go ahead and uh, pick a new point on the track. Um, those of you that have started with a new session, you can start with the beginning of the track. But I, I do want you to do this task of using the microphone attached to the fast track, not shouting at the screen using the internal microphone. Record yourself counting from zero to nine, and do it again. Do it at a nice pace, slowly, so you've got nice lots of space in between the numbers. Okay. So I'm just going to do this real quick on my machine. If you, some of you need to recap this, uh, you can do this as well. Let me see here. Um, so I need to launch Pro Tools, obviously. So I can actually close this screen. Okay. I'm going to just create a blank new session. Do I need to worry about these down here at all? Anybody remember from last time? That's what we have. 24 and 44.1. Okay. If you just a, a word, the fast track itself is limited to 44.1 kilohertz. You can't do 48 kilohertz. Okay. Uh, so that that's a if you're going to use the fast track as an input device, you have to use 44.1. 48 is nice if you're doing a video project. A lot of video DVDs run at 48 kilohertz. So we'll talk about that maybe next week. Okay. But it only happened as soon as I plugged this in. Before you plugged it in or after no, you plugged it in? Oh, okay. Did you plug it in after Pro Tools was started? I restarted. You did restart. And then it said? Yeah, okay. now I just went up before. Okay. okay. Hey, someone's playing through the speakers. Okay, I'm going to get to that in a second. Okay, hopefully we can get past some of these nag screens. Some of these nag screens are not as crucial as they sound, basically. Okay. Um, so I've got a new session. Okay, how do I create a new track in this session? Everybody remember from yesterday? Yeah, track. track. New. Okay, good. I'm going to create a new track. Do I want a mono track or stereo track or a quad track or what do I want? Mono. Okay, good. Mono audio track. And just to show you, there are some other options here that we may or may not get into. I think we'll probably get into the master fader next week. Uh, but Pro Tools does do MIDI. Uh, we will be using Logic, though, instead when we get to the MIDI project. Okay. So audio track, I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. Okay. And you can see that it creates my track. Okay. Uh, easiest way to manage my input and output is in the Mix window. Okay. And you'll recall I have this I.O. right here. Okay, as I was saying, the input output here. Okay, I/O in the mix window. If I'm if I have the edit window in front, how, what's a quick way for me to get the mix window back to the front? Command equal. Yes. So command equal toggles back and forth easily between the edit window and the mix window. Okay, that's a key. If you learn no other keystroke, okay, besides maybe command S, because that's what you. That's a quick way to save. Yes. Okay. But command equal for Pro Tools is a very handy way to toggle back and forth between the windows. You're going to want to know that keystroke because you're going to be going back and forth between these two, these two windows. Okay. Um, I heard somebody create feedback over there. That's probably because your input might be set to fast track input one. That's where the microphone plugs in. Okay. And if your output is set to the built-in output, it's going to play through the computer speakers. That's a problem, right? Anytime you have a microphone near speakers, yes, okay, it's going to create a feedback situation, okay? So we want to listen over headphones out of our fast track device, okay? And if you're not in the habit of bringing headphones to class yet, get in the habit of bringing headphones to class. If you switch it to the output one and two, it should go through the output jack in the front of your fast track, okay? So again, real quick, input one will be the microphone input. Output one and two will be the headphone jack on the front of your fast track. Okay, you want to be using the fast track for this. Okay, here's what I do. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, rather than me running around to five different machines, I'm gonna walk you through how to fix the hardware setup. Okay, so that, that's a more efficient way to go about this. So I need everybody to tune in and follow along with me here because otherwise this will not work, okay? We need to fix this on every machine, okay? Uh, and even if it is working on your machine, follow these steps because you might get in here and be on a machine where it's not working and you'll have a problem, okay? So, quick way to fix this. First, go ahead and save your session, 
and quit Pro Tools, okay? Save your session and quit Pro Tools, okay? We need to launch what's called the Audio MIDI Setup, okay? That is the, it's a little program that Apple uses to manage your audio and MIDI hardware connected to your computer, okay? The fastest way to do that, if you do command space bar, you'll notice the little search icon at the top of the screen lights up. If you just type in the word audio, the first hit should be audio MIDI setup, yes? So command space bar, type in audio, the first hit should be audio MIDI setup. Go ahead and click that. And it should bring up this screen. Is everybody seeing this screen? If you're not seeing this screen, go to the window and it should say something about show audio window or hide audio window. You want to make sure it's, it's, if it says hide, it's actually being shown. If it says show, it's actually being hidden. But make sure that this window is up, okay? In this column on the left hand side, okay, there's an option that says Pro Tools Aggregate I.O click that so it's blue or gray or whatever color that is okay and then when you look at this list on the right hand side you want to make sure everything in the use column is checked make sure all of those are checked I have a suspicion if you had the NA or fast track not available okay one of those was not checked okay uh, in addition it's ideal if the built-in output is set as your clock source And then it's ideal if 44100 is your sampling rate, okay? So make sure you've got clock source built-in output, sample rate 44100, and that everything is checked here. Everybody got that? You might have a little bit different option because I have actually multiple inputs on my uh, Fast Track Pro. Don't pay attention to these counts over here because they're going to be different between your machine and mine, but as long as everything is checked here, built-in output 44100, you should be good to go, okay? Go ahead and quit audio MIDI setup, okay, and then relaunch Pro Tools. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you can do this before a session. No, you have to have a session up. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to create, I'm going to open up my previous session. If you had a session launched, go ahead and do that. Okay. <coughs> So you can't do anything to the hardware setup until the session is set up. Yeah, so you're, you're falling on? No, same error? Yeah. Okay, let me finish this up. Um, okay, then you want to go to the setup menu, and you want to look at the option that says playback engine. Anybody still have any doubts why I didn't want to go through this with everybody? Because this is, this is, okay. Go to playback engine. Make sure at the top where it says current engine, forget the fact that your window looks a little different than mine. At the top where it says current engine, make sure this says Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. Does everybody have that? If everybody has Pro Tools Aggregate I.O., you can go ahead and hit OK at the bottom. Okay. Next step, we're not done yet. Go back to Setup. Go to I.O. So setup, I.O. Okay, there's two tabs at the top I want you to take a look at. On input, you should see two rows, one that says built-in input and one that says fast track input. Does everybody have those? No. Ah, okay. Three is good too. Is there something that says built-in and something that says fast track there though? Anybody have? You don't have fast track, okay. If you don't have fast track, only if you don't have fast track. Everybody else, turn your ears off right now, okay. Hit the default button on the input screen. It should add it. It might not say fast track at first, but right here where it says fast track, if you just click or double click, let's see, what do I have to do? Double click. It becomes editable. You didn't even know that was a word, editable, okay. So those of you that did not have fast track and you just added a row by clicking the, the default button, click on where it says input one, two, that row that just popped up and add the word fast track there. That's going to help you in the future know that those are the fast track inputs. Okay. 
They're the fast track inputs before you name them, but naming them helps you know that they're the fast track inputs. Everybody follow that? Okay. So JP and Matt, you were able to do that? Okay. Now, at the top, go to the output. Make sure mine looks a little different because I've got four outputs on my pro version of the fast track up here, but you should have something that says out fast track output. And I'm, I'm guessing that JP and Matt don't have that, yes? Okay. Repeat the step. You don't have it either, Taylor? Okay. Same process applies. While the output tab is selected, go to where it says default down here, click that button. It should add a row. That last row that got added that says output one, two, that's your fast track output. Go ahead and do the same thing. Double click and actually add the word fast track before output one, two, just so you know in the future that, it's a, that, that it is in fact the out, fast track output. I'll take a look at that in a second. Okay, once you've added the word fast track to the input and the output so that you know what they are, if you hit OK, it might say something about your hardware setup changed or whatever, or no? No. Okay. Go back to the mix window for me real quick and check to see if you've got options for uh, fast track input one and fast track output one, two. Did that fix your problem, JP and Matt? Okay. Okay. Congratulations, you just learned how to configure the hardware on the lab machine. Jacob added one little wrinkle here when he actually started to listen to it, okay? Because at the end of the day, we want this to be listenable audio, right? Okay. So, one other wrinkle I want you guys to fix now that we've got the I.O., when we've got the playback engine. Go into option, oh, excuse me, setup, playback engine. Everybody needs to do this, otherwise your audio is going to sound awful, okay? Playback engine. Okay, you should have an option that says H slash W buffer size, and it says something like 512 samples. Yes? Okay, lower that to 128 samples. And then hit OK. That should fix the audio quality. If anybody, and if you got ahead and uh, we're trying out the sound and listening to the microphone, that should actually fix the quality, okay? I hope that's our last hardware configuration issue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Set up. Playback engine. Hardware buffer size. Change that to 128. Okay. Bam. Yes. Hit OK. So now, back to input output. Okay. The list that I have. Okay. But you're now experts on how you guys are going to be like so valuable now because you know how to fix the hardware in here. Other classes are going to be like, I can't get it to work. And you're going to be like, step aside. Anyway, okay. So, I.O. here. Make sure you've got the input to fast track input one. That should give you your microphone input. Make sure you've got your output set to one and two. That should give you your stereo headphones. Okay. And if you hit record enable and you have a microphone attached, you should be able to talk into it, and I should be able to hear myself talking into the microphone. Isn't that great? Okay. Output one, two. Yep. That will give you, that, that gives you output from the little headphone jack on the front of the silver box. Okay. That's what that does. Okay. If you record and enable the track, that's the first step, okay. And then you have to do what? How, how do I get to the point of being able to actually record myself counting from 0 to 9? What was the next step? Anybody remember? Uh, Matt or uh, Alex? You have to go to the little audio sliver, and you have to click on the record record your audio one. Okay, yeah. So on the channel, channel yeah. in the mix window, you have to arm the track. Okay? I'll translate into proper Pro Tools lingo okay so on the channel in the mix window you have to arm the track after I've armed the track what do I need to do Jacob uh -huh, yes I have to essentially arm the session or enable the master record record enable okay and then what's the final step to actually start recording audio hit play zero one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, ten. When I'm done, I can hit stop. Okay. And look at that. I've got audio recorded on my track. Okay. 
Wow, we're 35 minutes into class and we've gotten through the recap portion, okay? See why we're not talking about Brian Eno? I could, we could talk for 75 minutes about Brian Eno, but I, I've got to make sure you know how to use Pro Tools at the end of the day, okay? Uh, do some research on Brian Eno on your own, okay? Because he is an interesting guy. Okay, so that's what we did last time. Hopefully everybody has some audio on your track now of you counting from zero to nine, yes? I may have just talked over somebody's over there. I heard, is that you, Jacob? No, okay. So you might hear me shouting in the background. It'll still work for this demo purposes, okay? First thing I want to show you on the edit window, okay? Because we're going to focus on the edit window first. And I'm actually going to go ahead and close the transport window, okay? In the edit window, okay? You're probably looking at a tiny little sliver of audio, right? Okay, you might want to zoom on that so you can actually see it a little more clearly, okay? Right up here in this section of the edit window are your zoom controls, okay? If you click the arrow to the right, it's going to zoom in. If you click the arrow to the left, it's going to zoom out, okay? You also have a vertical zoom here with the little audio waveform. And you have numbers one through five. These are kind of zoom presets, if you will, okay? So five being the farthest zoomed in, one being the farthest zoomed out in the zoom presets, okay? Those can be kind of handy if you get tired of clicking the left arrow and the right arrow, okay? But you might want to zoom in a little bit so that your, your short little, uh, what, mine ended up being about 14 seconds long, okay? I'm going to make my 14 seconds span the monitor so that it's all the way across, okay? So there's my track. There's me counting. You can tell, right, by looking at it, it's, it's me saying one through nine, right? Okay. It's rhythmic, yes? Okay. Some of those things that we talked about last time, okay? So I've, it, this, that's the zoom controls there, okay? Next thing you need to notice just to the right of the zoom controls are all of the editing tools, okay? And I have a slide for this. There it is, okay? Here's the names of the tools, okay? Number one, we've got the zoomer tool, okay? So the little spyglass, this is not for searching in your audio, okay? This is for actually zooming. You click and drag and it will zoom into that tool. You, the trim tool, the selector tool, the grabber tool, the scrubber tool, and the pencil tool. Some of you may have this whole section here highlighted. And I think that's actually how mine is, is set up right now. Yeah, so I've got this whole blue section here highlighted, okay? Uh, let's see, there are, there are six tools here, okay? There are, happen to be six rows of desks in here. Okay, you guys all over here, uh, JP, J uh, Taylor, and Denisa, you guys are number one. So click on the Zoomer tool so that it's highlighted, and then click and drag on your audio and see how it, what it does. Aiden's row right here. You guys are going to be the trimmer tool folks. Click on the trimmer tool so that it's highlighted by itself, and then click and drag and see what it does. Amanda, you're, you and Alex are going to be the selector tool. Pick the selector tool and then click and drag and see what it does to your audio. Okay. Jacob, your row is going to be the grabber tool. Uh, Matt, your row is going to be the scrubber tool. And Jacob, your is going to be the pencil tool. You may need to interact with the zoom tool to figure out what it does. You might need to zoom in real close. And I'm going to get to edit modes in a second, but before you start clicking all over the place, which might be too late for some of you, make sure this says slip right here. Make sure the slip is highlighted green. Okay. Take a few seconds. Figure this out. See what your tool does. All right. Each row should have had a chance to check out their different tool editing tools. Okay. So row of desks number one. What does the spyglass zoomer tool do? It does normal zoom and single zoom. Say again? Yeah. Okay. So if I click and drag, what do I, what should I expect it to happen? Uh, the area should be large. Yeah. So if I click, everybody watch this. You can try this out for yourselves. I'm on the zoomer tool. I click and drag. Whatever I've dragged to, that's what expands to fill the window. Okay. That can be really handy if you. And then you can use your edit your zoom locations to go back up like that. 
So if I want to look at me saying the word, I don't know, one, two, three, this should be four, right? I can look at that. Okay. So that's a very handy tool to have. I'm using the presets right here, one through five. And I know three is going to give me about, you know, a few things. Okay. So that's a zoomer tool. Okay. Aiden, somebody on Aiden's row, let's see, Rosemary or Elisa or Maisha, what, what is, what does the trimmer tool do? Yeah, so whatever, you can kind of cut out part of your audio. So there was this extra bit of audio here at the end where I was saying, okay, I think I'm done talking right now. I don't actually want that in my finished product. So rather, I don't have to do a cut and then delete, basically. I can use the trimmer tool to just take the end and move it over. Boom, done, okay? Uh, and when I'm in slip mode, I'll get to modes in a second. Everything stays in place, okay? I'll show you what some of the other modes do in a minute. Selector tool, you probably have the most boring one, but what, what does the selector tool do? Yeah, so the area you drag over is highlighted, okay? Keep that in mind. We're going to use that in a minute when we get to capture regions, okay? Grabber tool, what does the grabber tool do? Moves around the audio clip on the yeah. one. Yes. So you can move it back and forth now, okay? You can, if you don't want this countdown to start until five seconds into your piece, you can do that, okay? Make sense? Matt or somebody on your row, what does the, what does the scrubber tool do? This is maybe the most fun tool. No? Mark, okay, sorry. What, it, anybody on your row? Figure out what the scrubber tool does? Uh, when you drag it across the auto, it plays it at the speed of the dragon. Four, roll. Yeah. It's a little difficult with a trackpad, but with the mouse, this is a fun tool. One, no, one, no, one, two, two. What? Is there a practical application for that? Uh, well, we did the first exp uh, um, the first project where we had to kind of identify visual cues as far as what's happening, but it's still, even looking at this, I, I mean, I know I counted from zero to two, but if I want to confirm that this is two, two, two. okay, it's an easy way to do that. Especially if you're scanning through text where somebody's read something, it's an easy way, okay, where does that sentence end? Okay, right there, okay. Now I, now I know where to put my cut, okay? Um, the other inevitable question that people ask me is, how do I record the output from this? Because it's... Okay, because you can have all kinds of fun with that. Uh, especially if you zoom in a little bit more, you know. Okay. Uh, there is no way to record it on a single machine, but there's no reason you couldn't take the output from one machine and patch it to, to the input of another machine and record it that way. Okay? So, Mark, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll get it right. Jacob, anybody over there? Is, are you the only one on that row looking at the pencil tool? Yes. Okay, so what does the pencil tool do? It lets you draw the actual waveform. Yeah. Different ways. So you kind of have to zoom in pretty close for this one, right? So if I pick like the middle of me talking here, okay, and I click the pencil tool, I can actually, with the pencil tool, redraw the waveform. You gonna let me? No, I'm not zoomed in enough. Uh, here, there you go. Okay. Now I expect that you ask your ask your set your question again about the scrubber tool. What is the practical use of the scrubber tool? The well, no, about the pencil tool. No, but ask it about the pencil tool this time, Jacob. What is the practical use of the pencil tool? Okay, I'm glad you asked, Jacob. Okay. <laughs> A lot of times when you're doing. Uh, recordings from old analog sources, you'll have little pops, let's see, that might look something like that, okay? It's very easy then to take the pop and draw over it and smooth it back out, okay? So, so a lot of times the, the digital mastering, digital retouching, uh, okay, you think of like retouching for photographs where you're cleaning up uh, blemishes and that sort of stuff. You can do the same thing with the pencil tool, clean up blemishes in your audio. Okay, think of it that way. Okay. You can also 
misuse it because uh, if this is one of the ones that has a drop down list. If I want to do something rather than freehand, if I want to do random, I can do. Oh, it's not going to pick random. Awesome. Anyway, there are other shapes that you can have it draw in. Bottom line, okay. Uh, but I, I leave that to you to play with. Okay, so that's the six tools that are in Pro Tools. Okay. Uh, start to become aware of which tool is selected because, as you can see, clicking and dragging on the audio reacts drastically different depending on which tool you have selected. Yes. Okay. So just like in, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you have that tool palette over there, basically. Pro Tools gives you the same kind of palette approach to different tools, okay? Uh, those are the six of them. Get to know the names of them, okay? Uh, I'll flash that back up here on the screen, okay? Get to know the names, get to know what they do, okay? Um, let's see. Bah, 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 bah. The next thing I need to talk about is edit modes. I had everybody make sure that you were in slip mode before doing that. But there are other modes, okay? And the hotkeys associated with those are actually the F keys, F1, F2, F3, F4, shuffle, slip, spot, and grid, okay? Uh, I'm trying to think if this would be better to do after I show you how to capture regions. That might be the case. But be aware that there are different modes. I'm going to come back. I'm going to actually circle back to these after I show you how to capture regions, okay? Uh, I don't want to get to that yet. Let's see here. Okay, so we talked about edit tools, we talked about edit modes, rulers, okay? If you're like me, you don't need to measure your project in time code or in samples, okay? So you might be uh, a little overwhelmed by the fact that Pro Tools gives you one, two, three, four, five, six different ways to measure your project in time across the, the x-axis of your screen, okay? If you'd like to get rid of some of these, you can do that in the View menu. There's an option that says Rulers. Everything that is checked is what is visible. So not only are there more than six, because you can actually check all of these and get and see all these different ways to measure your audio, okay? But you can get rid of them. I don't need meter, for instance, in this project. I don't need tempo for this project because this is an audio project. I don't need markers, maybe. I might come back to markers, but I don't need them right now, okay? I certainly don't need samples, but you'll notice right now, if I go to the rulers menu, samples is grayed out. Anybody know why? It's not grayed out, it's not grayed out for you, but it's grayed out for me. I'll go back to this. Look at this region right here. Did we see any difference between samples and the other ones? Yeah. I have samples selected. Okay, so not a, because there are umpteen different rulers, Pro Tools makes you choose which one is going to be the primary ruler. Okay, the primary way that you're going to deal with audio on the timeline. Okay, so whatever one is highlighted, that is the primary. You can't get rid of the primary ruler. Okay, I'm actually... I'm interested in time code. I'm not interested in samples, so I'm going to click time code and make that my primary ruler. And then I'm going to get rid of samples because I don't need to know that I'm, you know, one million two hundred seventy-six thousand samples from the beginning of my project. And yes, that's exactly how it counts. It shows you exactly how many samples you are from the beginning of your project. Okay. And because I'm not doing a musical project, I'm doing just numbers and me counting and audio, I don't really need bars and beats, right? Bars and beats is more of a musical terminology. I can hide that. Wow, look at that nice clean window with a time code, okay? Doesn't that look... I'm less stressed already, right? Because I've got less ways to measure my audio, okay? So that's rulers in a nutshell. Let's get to capturing regions, okay? Because this is where I want you to get to this in-class assignment to start actually manipulating this count up that you have, okay? Okay, so if you click on the grabber tool, you can go ahead and move the, this, this region back to the beginning of your beginning of your timeline, okay? So make sure that it's all the way at the front. If you trimmed off part of the beginning, you can do that as well. You can uh, get rid of some silence, okay? And then I want you to pick the selector tool. So pick the selector tool. 
and I want you to choose your first number. For me, it's the number zero. And if I hit play right now, zero. Okay, it should play and then stop. Is everybody getting that behavior? What I had you do was hit selector, select yourself saying one of the numbers. Zero. I'm going to start with zero. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to capture regions. Okay. There are several different pieces of terminology here that, we're, that are going to be in play. Okay. When you record audio into Pro Tools, Pro Tools does, is not a one-to-one, -one, there's one piece of audio on the track. You can actually have multiple pieces of audio on each track, okay? The way you manage that is by capturing regions of audio files so that you can then play with them and resequence them, okay? So, after you hit the selector tool and select yourself saying the number whatever and hit play, confirm that it's just that word that you're saying, go to region menu at the top. The region menu is at the top right next to track and you're going to go to the option that says capture. This is another keystroke you might want to get used to. Clips? clips. What? Okay. That's unheard of. Okay. Clips. So in the clips menu, capture, does it still say capture? Yeah. That's the exact same menu. Okay. For those of you that are able to do this, region, capture, brings up a window. You want to give it a name. I suggest a really straightforward name. This is me saying the word zero, so I'm going to call it zero. Hit OK. Do this for the rest of your sounds. Okay, so this is me saying the word one. Okay, I can hear the background too. One. Okay. I'm going to capture the, this region. So repeat this process for all of your numbers. And I can do this pretty fast because Command R is the keystroke for this. That's another keystroke you probably want to learn. Three. I don't know why I always say three that way. Wait, what did I say here? Six. Okay. Just go through and, and capture them right now. Yep. Capture all your numbers. I think my zero might have not worked because it would, that's why I would go to capture is because it has that little fade in the beginning. Yeah. Fade in at the beginning. Okay. Yeah, little, as if we're out this, a little line. I'm sorry for those of you that are having hardware issues. We will continue to troubleshoot this. I want to make sure I show you the skills that I want to show you today. Because okay, if you were able to go through and capture the numbers, the regions, okay, you should on the right hand side of the screen have a list. Does yours say clip menu now? Is that what it says? Clips. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So they totally changed the terminology between 9 and 10. Okay. So so look at the clip menu, the clip list, okay, on the right-hand side. Does everybody have this on the right-hand side of their edit window? Yeah. If, it's, if you come in here at one point and it's hidden, there's a little super secret button right here, which is like an arrow pointed at a wall kind of thing that hides it, okay? down here at the very bottom of the screen, okay? Um, so if you don't need it, you can make it hidden, but if you do need it, which you do for this exercise, okay, you should now in this list see all the named regions that you had, right? Yes? Okay. You also see that there at the top is there's something that says audio one, maybe underscore O one, right? Anybody notice the, uh, the typographical difference between audio one and your regions that you just captured? It's bold. It's bold, right? Okay. Key thing to know about Pro Tools. In the, the regions list is going to show you all the audio clips, excuse me, all the, the clips menu is going to list is going to show you all the clips that are currently in your project. Okay. Everything that you're working with. Okay. When it's in bold, the clip corresponds to an actual sound file on your hard drive. When the clip is 
not in bold, when it's just in regular typeface, it means that it's a virtual region. It's a portion of a sound file that's on your hard drive. Okay? You can have as many of these virtual regions as you want. If you want to take today's lecture, dump it into Pro Tools, and chop it up so that every word is an individual region, you can do that. Okay? It'll take you a lot of time, but then you can make a really crazy Dr. Wallet cut up piece. Okay? Challenge. Go. Okay? But for today's exercise, I wanted you to capture the numbers 0 through 9, okay? Now I want you to do something really radical. Click on the grabber tool after you've captured all your regions. Click on the region in the region list, and then I want you to hit the delete key. It's not in the timeline, okay? It's not in the timeline, but what do you notice over here about audio1 underscore 01? It's still there in the clip menu, yes? Use the grabber tool, click on it, hit delete. The grabber tool is key to deleting the whole thing. I'm always going to try and tell you what tool to use first, okay? You got to make sure you follow along with that, okay? So deleting it from the timeline, this is another key point. Deleting something from the timeline does not mean that you have deleted the audio. It does not mean you've deleted it from your project. It's still over here in the regions list. So if I take this audio 101, if I click and drag, I can actually add it back to the timeline. Look at that, I got my audio back, okay? Okay, so another key point here, deleting something from the timeline does not equal deleting the asset from your hard drive, okay? So don't be afraid to delete things from the timeline. You don't need to record everything and leave everything in the timeline as you're working with it. The, the clip list on the right-hand side is everything that you're using in your project. Everybody understand that Keep that point? Okay. I constantly see young Pro Tools people leaving a bunch of stuff on extra tracks in their edit window because they're worried they're going to lose it otherwise. You don't need to do that. You can, as long as it's in your region list or your clip list, it's in your project. Everybody understand that? Okay, so now that I showed you how to get it back in there, I'm going to go ahead and hit grab. I'm going to click delete again, get rid of it. You count it up from 0 to 9. Now I want you to resequence it so that you count down from 9 to 0. Okay, so if I just simply use the regions list over here on the right hand side, I should be able to just click and drag. Click and drag. There's eight. Let me find seven. This gets a little confusing because they're in alphabetical order. But you're all college students. I think you can manage. Five. Then four. If I remember correctly. And then three. Then two. If you, if you forgot one, go ahead and just skip over it for now. But the point that I want to make is this, that I can now click that in the timeline, and even though I count it up, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay. Are we able to do that? This is the magical world of Pro Tools editing. Okay. We don't need things to be in a certain order. They don't need to be in the order that they actually occurred. I can rework things. Yes? Okay. If you were able to manage... Okay. Here's the other key point. Okay. Well, I'll, let me say... So, so follow up to this little in-class exercise. Now that you've counted down... Okay. Go ahead and hit delete again. Remove them from the timeline. Arrange the numbers so that it recites your phone number. And you say to me, but Dr. Wallach, there's two eights in my phone number. That's okay. You can drag something from the clip list as many times into the timeline as you need. So try this out. Try dragging your phone number in. And actually, before you do that, or if, even if you've started doing that, let's get into talking about modes. I'm going to click on Shuffle. So click, it was in slip mode, now drop it into shuffle mode and watch what happens as you drop things into the timeline.
you'll notice a little bit of a difference. Everybody see what's happening as you go into shuffle mode? Yep. So now if I select all three, eight, six. All right. You've just now become a automated uh, phone answering thing, right? Ever wonder why all the ones sound the same and twos sound the same? This is what happens when you call your bank and they recite numbers to you. Okay, so you've learned the key difference between slip mode and shuffle mode. Who can explain that to me? I'll get to you in a second, Alex. Who can explain that to me in like a sentence or two? The difference between slip mode and shuffle mode. This Alex, yeah. That's what, which one does? Shuffle, right? They're automatically going to stick together as opposed to slip does what? How would you describe slip to somebody? I, yeah. The track lands on Timeline, wherever you place it. Yeah, wherever you drop it is where it's going to place. Okay, and now that you've got all these numbers in here, if you just uh, if you still got the grabber tool selected, you'll notice that if you do this, if you start to shuffle things, it's actually quite handy in shuffle mode because it will keep things stuck together and just resequence things. That's why it has the name shuffle mode. It's not this this sticky factor. It's the fact that once things are stuck together and you start to move them around, it'll always keep things butted up end to end. Okay. We've covered shuffle mode. We covered slip mode. Spot mode is is uh, pretty precise. If you click on spot mode and you try to drop something, you can watch what happens. You get a dialog box which actually what. How many minutes, seconds, and frames would you like to place this in your project, basically? Okay, this is by far the most precise method. Okay, uh, but it is very handy if you're doing a video project. If you know that that explosion happens at two hours, three minutes, four frames, etc., you can precisely place that sound. Okay. Uh, grid mode is handy as well, but it's most handy when you have bars and beats. Who can, th I mean, just think about the word grid and think about the connection with bars and beats. What do you think grid does? It snaps to a rhythmic beat. So if I go, I'll do this real quick, and then I want to talk about your homework maybe. I don't, know if, have I, I don't know if I've shown you enough to do your homework. That's a problem. Bars and beats, if I make that my primary ruler, and if I select... Oh, I don't know, right up here in the grid, I can choose eighth notes as my grid. Now when I drop things in, I can make sure that I'm in perfect metric time every time. It will snap to eighth notes, yes. Okay? So that's what grid mode does. I just want to make sure I expose you to do those. For audio projects, you're mainly going to be using slip and shuffle. Okay? Musical projects, grid is pretty darn handy. Okay? Now... What have we done today? We did this in-class assignment, basically, right? If you, if you didn't get a chance to do this, practice this over the weekend, counting down and then reciting your phone number. I wanted to show you mixed window features. I wanted to get to multi-tracking, and I'm out of time. So I have two minutes. No. Come on. No. Yeah. Uh. I have one minute now, yeah, because you guys are hemming and hawing, right? Okay. Well, this just means you're going to have a bigger homework assignment from Tuesday to Thursday. It's actually not too big a homework assignment. Because what I wanted you to do was re-record your Welcome to SoundCloud with multi-tracking and layer it. Okay. Um, let me see. Okay, well, I'll, I'll throw that into the mix for Tuesday. Let me see. Okay, well, the thing I want you to be thinking about over the, because we'll cover, we'll cover multi-tracking on Tuesday then, okay? Um, I'm working on removing the soundtracks from the audio. I've got all the videos for your Unit 2 project selected, cropped, edited into one-minute segments. 
look for a message from me about it being posted online and available for you to view and preview. Uh, you're going to need to take uh, a little bit of time over the weekend then to view them and pick which one you're going to do for your project, okay? Uh, they're not up there yet, so don't go looking for them yet. I have to get the audio sucked off of them, basically, because Apple made it a lot harder to do that these days. So I'm removing the audio track from these videos, these one-minute videos that you have to pick one to use for your Unit 2 project, where you're going to do a sound design for these videos, okay? So look for a message from me uh, via email, and I'll tweet it so that you can uh, find these videos, look at them over the weekend, and pick one. I also have a suggested reading on the Blackboard site. I say suggested because it means I'm not going to quiz you on it, okay? But if you are a technically minded individual and you like the technical nuts and bolts stuff that was in the Aldrich book, chapters, I think it's 13 and 14, get into audio, dealing with audio signal processing. Um, that kind of is going to set the stage for things to come. So next week we'll get into multi-tracking, we'll get into assets, look for stuff for me about videos to preview and picking a video for your Unit 2 project, okay? That's going to be your homework that you need to do over the weekend. Bye.